that, very interestingly enough, um, things that, that were built in an era when we were still a colony. And, and I, I guess the question is, to what extent does that become our heritage? And so in a sense, what is the relationship that we have with that history? Some of it is hard. Should we erase it? Should we change it? Um, what do we do with it? And so I'm curious to know how, in the space that you sit, of beginning to look at the question of, of, of that railway line and documenting of those things, what you have been exploring, what questions are you asking yourself that connect to this notion of documenting and heritage and collecting, but also the relationship with these histories. When we talk about the Mzungu in the middle, it means we have a version and we have a picture of who this person is. Um, maybe they're probably male, they're white, and this is the kind of version that we ascribe to collectors or people who value our heritage. So I started the project that Joy is talking about. I called it Save the Railway. I started it in 2013. So where in 2013, I was a student in university, second year. Um, in a very miraculous way, uh, I applied to go to university in Juja, and I was sent to Voi. So I was studying computer science, but I always liked history. So being in Voi, very small town, very small campus. I, I had a lot of time to myself and also a lot of time on my hands. And one afternoon, I decided, let me go visit the railway station in Voi. And this is actually the first photo of the station that I took. This is in 2013. And just see, see what's there. And at that time, I had a blog that I was writing, also a history blog. And um, so I got there and I found this building and I thought, okay, it's a beautiful building. It's old, it's abandoned. Um, and pretty much that was, the, that was my first reaction to the building. And then I started speaking to people just who were working in the station and there were a lot of sentiments of um, change, that the new railway is coming. There was a lot of sentiments of hope, but also despair in the sense that um, what does this mean for these other structures? And what I realized in that very short time that I spent in Voi was that um, a lot of how the railway stations and the railway was remembered was never from an African perspective. So when you Google the history of the railway, it was man eaters and, um, you know, Patterson and, you know, just a very romantic safari. And it was a very singular narrative. And I thought to myself, um, the railway had probably been serving independent Kenya maybe longer than it was serving, you know, uh, pre-independent Kenya. So I, I tried searching for these histories and this, my grandfather used the railway, my uncles used the railway, my aunties used the railway, but it was nowhere to be found. So I decided to look at the railway stations as the buildings that are connected to these stories and to these memories. So this was in 2013. It took me one year to get a permit to photograph, I almost got arrested. In fact, I was arrested. Uh, my camera was taken. But it was the idea that people could not believe that I was doing it for history. So I would, get, I would get to a place and say, I just want to take photos of the station, and people would say, but why? Because it's important for history, but why? Like, what is your real motive behind this? And I always found it so strange that people didn't believe that that's really what I wanted. And that was my intention. And I think if I look back at it now, it goes back to the Mzungu in the middle, maybe I didn't fit the image or the description of who is a collector and who preserves history. Um, to cut the long story short, um, it took me three years, between 2013 to 2016, and I documented maybe 70 stations between Mombasa and Kisumu during my school breaks, um, in between holidays, with um, funding from friends and family. That's how I met Bettina. And um, what really struck me through the whole process was just the incredible difficulty of doing it. I always thought to myself, this is, it sounded interesting to me, but it also sounded very important. Some of the stations were being demolished. Some of them had not been documented. I went to the railway museum. The photos they had were probably 1900s, 1910s, 1920s, but really not much about what the railway and how all the towns in Kenya and most of the urban centers in Kenya grew around railway stations. You know, these were buildings that were uh, in Chemilil, I think there was a, a little store next to the station. And when I spoke to the station master there, he said that it was used like, like a morgue. 
So if you, the railway was used to transport dead bodies in terms of if you couldn't afford to hire a car if your loved one died in Nairobi or in, you know, but it was that importance that we were not just capturing in history. So it took me three years. Um, unfortunately, after that, I tried to deposit them at the National Archives. I tried to talk to the museum, but there was really no system for an individual or an enthusiast to access those spaces as a participant, not so much as a learner. So I ended up archiving them digitally. I created a website. I mapped them. Inter I used interactive mapping to show, to, to show where the stations were, and I also added them to Google Photos just to have the longevity of the digital assets. And that was, in the end, my strategy for keeping them, not so much the physical institutions. Mm. Yeah.